Hello student, in this video you are going to learn the introduction to cell membrane model. I will start with the history of cell membrane, uh, but later on you will watch another teacher's video to learn more about the structure of the membrane that the IB wants you to know. So this is basically the video about the history before the models that you have to learn um, based on the IB syllabus. So features of the cell membrane that have to be fulfilled are one, it must be separate water in the cytoplasm from the water in the surrounding and coexist with the water at the same time. So uh, the first feature in the, in the simple format, uh, I can say it separate water from water, but it also have to be able to coexist with water at the same time. And number two, the plasma membrane also has to be thin and flexible yet it has to be strong enough to hold the cell to be intact. And the last one, the cell membrane must be able to let some substances to pass through but not others, or we call it selective permeability. It permits the substances to pass through, but it is selective. So this is the timeline of the history of the cell membrane from the beginning until the end which is uh, the latest one in year of 2000 and it will it was started at 1880 by overtone so we will see one by one of the um, important event in the history of cell membrane uh, regarding to or related to the functions or the features of the cell membrane so the first one, remember, uh, if you can go back to the previous slides, the first feature that has to be fulfilled by the cell membrane is to be able to separate and coexist with water. In 1880, um, Overtone found out that cell membrane or plasma membrane is basically made of lipid. So he was able to extract the plasma membrane and he uh, did some observation and he found out that the main substance in the plasma membrane is made of lipid and you know lipid or fat basically uh, if you put like a glass of water and you put um, a drop of oil the oil will be on the surface of the water because oil and water cannot uh, co uh, coexist they always separate so the first feature has been fulfilled a uh, it is able to separate water from water. However, how about the coexistence with the water? In the year of 1900, uh, Langmuir found out that actually it is not just lipid. The molecule, yes, basically it's made of lipid, but there is one additional molecule attached to it. Here you can see on, uh, in the diagram below uh, the history timeline, uh, this molecule is called phospholipid. The tail, which is the yellow part, the long yellow part, is made of lipid and it hates water. Yes, it can separate water from water. However, the head, which is called hydrophilic head, you can see in the gray box, the nature of hydrophilic head, which is made of phosphate, is love water or hydrophilic. So the tail, hydrophobic tails, you can see from the diagram number C, it means that you know phobia is kind of like afraid of something so hydrophobic means this tail hates water or afraid of water so this is the part that acts as like fat that separate water from water however the phosphate hat is hydrophilic which means that it loves water it attracts to water so that's why the first feature of the plasma membrane that it has to be able to separate and coexist with water at the same time can be fulfilled with this molecule the phospholipid because some part of the phospholipid hates water separate water from water and some other parts loves water so it can coexist with water because it attracts water in the year of 1920, uh, two scientists, Gorther and Grendel, they tried to extract um, the plasma membrane of the red blood cell. Back then, it was known that the red blood cell just contained the plasma membrane and there is no organelle inside the cell because the function of the cell is just to transport oxygen and um, carbon dioxide throughout the body. 
And also back then, because of the microscope and the calculation of the magnification power that you have learned previously, they also could estimate the surface area, the total surface area of the red blood cells. After extraction of the plasma membrane, they found out that actually the layer of the phospholipid that they found is actually doubled than the surface area of the red blood cell. Then it raised to a question, so what happened? Then they make a hypothesis that actually the plasma membrane, the bilayer, sorry, the phospholipid creates a bilayer or double layer as you can see from the timeline. So that helps them to explain why when they extract the plasma membrane, the surface area of the phospholipid is actually doubled from the surface area of the red blood cell. So they will they say back then that it is because the phospholipid create bilayer or double layer. And this leads to the fulfillment of the next feature of the plasma membrane. So you have learned that the head of the phospholipid, they, they love water or hydrophilic. And then the tail, which is made of fat, they are hydrophobic. Now imagine the extracellular and intracellular. Extracellular means the surrounding uh, outside of the cell and intracellular means inside the cell. They are mostly made of liquid, which is water. So that, that's why the hydrophilic head are attracted to the outside, to the extracellular and also intercellular because they love water. And the hydrophobic tail, they tend to be in the middle. They attract to each other because they hate water. So that's why the tails create double layer and they have hydrophobic attraction. These hydrophobic attractions are strong enough to make the plasma membrane to be intact. So you can see from this model that the fat, uh, the layer made of the hydrophobic tail are quite flexible because by uh, nature the fat um, in, uh, in the room temperature they become like liquid, they are flexible. But at the same time they are also strong because there is an attraction between the hydrophobic tails on the upper layer and the lower layer that creates a strong uh, bonding that makes the plasma membrane to be intact. So from this model, the first two features can be fulfilled. The first one, to separate the liquid in the extracellular and the intracellular that are mostly made of water. So this model can perfectly explain why water can be separated and uh, from water to water and also why this plasma membrane can coexist with water because of the existence of hydrophilic heads. And the second feature which is strong and flexible, why it is flexible because it's made of fat molecules that tend to be uh, like liquid inside uh, in the room temperature and it's strong because of the existence of hydrophobic interactions or bonding between the hydrophobic tails in the phospholipid bilayer. So, so far you have seen how the first two features can be fulfilled by the discovery of the plasma membrane model of the previous scientists. Now, um, in this final slide, I'm going to uh, give an inquiry question that, uh, how about the third feature which is selective permeability which means that the cell has to be able to select which substances can be uh, transported in or out and so on. So uh, the answer can be found in uh, the other video made by another IB teacher. So you will find um, four scientists. The first one is Daphson and Daniel Lee. In 1940 they created or refined the plasma membrane by adding protein sheets and then after that you will also see uh, one of the latest uh, discovery by Singer and Nicholson and that makes the plasma membrane model uh, even closer to uh, the actual um, plasma membrane structure. So 
uh, I think that's it from me for this video this is just an introduction for you so that you will uh, you can understand the context of the discovery of the plasma membrane uh, before you learn more about Daphson, Danieli and Singer and Nicholson model.